Hey there, it's Drew, and I'm going to take you inside the tool set that I take with me to welding jobs. You might have seen me on TikTok or Instagram, but this video is somewhat by request. Thanks for all the comments on previous videos showing interest in the tool trailer that I take with me out on the job site. For context, I'm a traveling TIG welder that specializes in process piping and sanitary welding. I'm an independent subcontractor or 1099er. I typically don't get my own work. I just hire on to larger welding companies who have big jobs and need extra manpower short term. So that means I need to provide my own tools, equipment, and some consumables. I do have a welder that works with me and I'm gonna show you all the welding and pipe fitting tools that we use on the job site. Let's take a look into my 20 foot trailer. Then I'll unload everything into the shop and I'll go over all the tools individually. I'll show you my power tools, my hand tools, take a closer look at some of the more specialized tools that I use for running stainless pipe. Uh, so we don't really work out of the trailer. We often have a work area inside the plant. Once we get to the job site, we unload almost everything. The orange rigid box stays here and stores an extra welder or two, some extra leads. That cabinet is screwed to the wall and stores some extra PPE and consumables, other odds and ends that we don't use every day. Now I'm gonna push everything into the shop so I can show you and let's get right into it. All right, let's take a closer look. NAC box number one, we have all the power tools. Over here in the piano box, we have uh, hand tools and some other odds and ends. We'll do a deep dive in those here in a minute, as well as all the more specialized tools I pulled out onto the workbench. I have three tripods. I usually take two of them on the road. I got two of the rigids. These are just your standard uh, up to six inch rigid pipe stands. Got them off of Amazon. The only difference is the one on the left is a little taller as you can see. I added seven inch pieces to all the legs. I did a good job. Hopefully you can't really tell where, but that's a lot more comfortable for bench welding. Lastly, the Milwaukee pipe stand. Uh, this thing's pretty sweet. They kind of came out with this recently. It has the leveling leg on the back. That's a really nice feature. The tray is removable. And then if you pull that handle right there, it will collapse to lay flat on the floor. It's very easy to set up and tear down and easy to store. Also, I did get a couple extra jaws with it, the stainless and the PVC jaw. So those are my benches. This custom job here is just a Harbor Freight vise bolted to a piece of stainless pipe. This thing comes in really handy sometimes. This three quarter inch plate is from a demo job I did a, a while back. There were some stainless tanks were getting torn out and the load cells for those tanks were sitting on these three quarter inch plates. So I saved them. I filled in all the holes except for this. I like to purge up through that and set my purge tree right there. I made the table adjustable with these ferrule connections. You can either stand up to work at it or you can swing it down a foot and sit down to weld. There's my high dollar Viper chair the adjustable seat heights, as well as my 12 inch Grizzly disc sander. I want a cute little custom stand that I made. Can easily be rolled around. We'll often sharpen tungsten with that or just deburr pieces we've cut. So here are the three mobile TIG rig setups we use. I'm running three Mac stars, a 150, a 161, and a 210DX. The 161 set up with short leads for the bench. The 150 is set up with long leads for out in position, and the 210 is set up with heavy duty leads for structural and big pipe welding. I could do a video dedicated to my welders. I could show you the leads and consumables that I use for each setup. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. This is my portable Ellis bandsaw model 1600. This thing makes my life a lot easier out in the field when I'm cutting pipe and stock. All right, let's take a look at some power tools. Uh, battery grinders and some impacts in the back row. Uh, on the front here, we've got a Sawzall, tank light, handful of drills. I'm not a diehard Milwaukee fanboy, but I will say uh, this drill was the first one that I bought when I started subcontracting, and that was four or five years ago. Corey and I have beat the snot out of it almost every day since I bought it, and it just will not die. Speaking of reliability, these Metabo grinders are the only corded grinders that I'll buy. The six inch ones with the variable speed. I think they go up to 9,000 RPMs. And 
they have a clutch, which means it won't kick back on you when you bind them up. We don't use remotes that often when we TIG weld. We're usually running lift arc, but I do have a foot pedal here in case we need to weld something a little more critical in the bench. Uh, we have the end grinder and a couple corded drills, the vacuum, the fan. That is a purge plug kit from purgeplugs.com. There's another one over on the table. I'll get to that in a second. Um, SDS hammer drill and a hole saw kit from Milwaukee band saw. And um, if you work in process piping, you already know what this is set up for. That's an air pump that's adapted to polyflow tubing. And that is for automatic air actuated valves so that we can manually actuate them. So here's my filler wire reserve. The blue ones are stainless 308. The red ones are ER70S-2 carbon steel wire. We got uh, mostly 8, 332 and 16th. Also have this custom made uh, wire separator. So these are all old torch leads. We're braided and made into like 20 foot ground extensions. By the way, most of the stuff you see in this video is organized in my Amazon storefront. If you want to check that out, click the link in the description below. Down here is the junk trunk. One really nice thing about these newer knack boxes is they take the bottom like six inches of the box and instead of just burying tools under other tools, they turned it into a separate drawer. I keep a lot of my consumables in this drawer. We've got the Monster 12 and 15 cups, some eight cups, uh, more cups. Back here we've got all the different size gas lenses, collets, buttons. Uh, I don't use gas diffusers. Those things are just silly. Some spare torch leads from CK Worldwide. Scotch Bright. Plenty of tungsten. Over in the NAC upright piano box with the junk trunk, we have lots of hand tools. We've got pipe wrenches starting at six up to 36 inch. I have box wrenches up to an inch and a half. Uh, some Bessie clamps, there's a chain wrench, a strap wrench, a three foot pry bar, hammers, etc. Here are some wire wheels and polishing wheels. My 3M radial bristle brush and my blue scotch bright wheel as well as the gray scotch bright wheel. Here's an Amazon special for you. The step bit set is in my storefront. This one is also ran me about 20 bucks. As well as these reamers from Viking. However, they were not so cheap. In this back box, I've got some high temp heat tape for purging as well as masking tape for purging, spare regulator, some rapid tap, pipe dope, a chalk line. And down at the bottom, we have a spider or a splitter for a giant argon tank. And in the back corner, we have several tacking clamps custom made for the different sanitary tubing sizes. A couple straps and shackles. Some adjustable wrenches and spud wrenches. A couple pipe fitting tools in this tray. A wrap around, an angle finder, some two hole pins, and a center finder. Wrenches and ratchets in the top drawer. Lots of miscellaneous odds and ends in the second drawer. Finger clamps and vice grips in the bottom drawer. These guys are really handy to have around for cutting out holes up to 12 inches. I use these often for IMP walls. They also work great for plexiglass or plywood. Uh, your drill chuck clamps down on that cutter bit and you set the pivot point to whatever size hole you want and you just rotate it around that point. Here's a pack of inspection mirrors. Allen keys and bits hang out on the side. I made a video a while back about that laser tape measure from Bosch. That's pretty handy to have on the job. The Dremel tool is from Milwaukee, and these quick attach cutting blades are awesome for cutting tacks, especially in sanitary tubing. And they only cost a lot of money. Get yourself a fully automatic assault ratchet, if you don't already have one, 
that's a huge time saver. I have a few books on hand for pipe fitting. Those are Chico's cards, the pipe fitter's field book, the pipe fitter's blue book, and the pipe fitter's handbook. All of those are on Amazon. The walkie talkies are from Rocky Talk. Corey and I use those when I need to talk to him, but he's not near me. Empire Torpedo Level, uh, Stabila Level, also the Clear Acrylic Spirit Level from Bethel. Great for fitting up small diameter piping. And for a long time, I ran the Dewalt Lasers. That's the three line laser level, as well as the five dot laser plumb bob. Those are some quality lasers. However, recently Milwaukee came out with their three line laser level, and there are a few pros and cons to each one. The Milwaukee laser has this fine tune adjustment knob, which is really nice for setting up your laser at long distances. You can also lock the laser in on an angle. Uh, however, the downside is it's pretty big and bulky. The DeWalt is more compact and has a better weight to magnet ratio, in my opinion. Also, that Bosch stand over here to the left is a really quality adjustable stand. I would recommend that for either laser. I keep a lot more consumables down here, four and a half and six inch cut off and grinding wheels, flap discs, sanding discs, flapper wheels, a bunch of rapid taps and polishing wheels, tape and dope as well, some ratchet straps, wire wheels, caution tape, 12 inch sanding pads for the disc sander, and lots of purge tape. Also wanna shout out these six and eight foot lean safe ladders. They're just A-frame ladders, but they're also made to lean up against a wall or an outside corner or an inside corner. Uh, super handy in certain situations. This is a container of death sauce or wonder gel. I use that for passivating, cleaning the color off of stainless steel welds. I've got the Harbor Freight Special here, up to inch and a half impact sockets. This is my saw block kit. It's from Tech South. They have sizes one inch up to four inch, and that's for putting a very square cut on sanitary tubing. There's a large and a small slot for either bandsaw or sawzall blades, and they all have wing nuts. These give you a nice square cut on sanitary tubing when you're up in position. I showed off this purge kit on a previous video. This is from purgeplugs.com. They have inch and a half through four inch purge plugs with the diffuser, uh, as well as a purge tree and a back purge uh, for purging ferrules. If you wanna know more about purging stainless steel pipe and tubing, I do have an entire video dedicated to that on my channel. And here's a 194 piece set from Husky. And up here is my sniffer. This is from Forensic Detectors. I use this for a few things. For one, tank entry. This tells me my oxygen levels, LEL, CO2, and it has alarms. But you can also turn off the alarms and put this probe in the end of a pipe or tubing to test your purge. Get that oxygen down as close to zero as you can. And this carbide nine piece hole cutter set was around 100 bucks on Amazon. These are 7 8 up to two inch. This is a pretty slick set from Flange Wizard. You've got the angle finder, the center finder, another wrap around and some two hole pins. And the Dynafile from Dynabraid. This thing comes in really handy when polishing in tight corners or doing handrail. And here's my PPE bag. Lift makes a really nice hard hat. The ExoFit harnesses are very comfortable. I have a D-ring and some retractable lanyards in there as well. These are my homemade purge pieces. I've referenced these in other videos as well. But there's a one foot piece of tubing with a ferrule on, one for each size. Those aluminum purge rings clamp multiple pieces together for purging and weld out. Or you can put the piece in your bench and weld like a uh, clamp a valve body to it and and weld smaller items that way that need purge. If you wanna get your hands on some of those purge rings, just DM me. I have a local machine shop make them and I can send them out to you. Several different size tubing cutters here. I do some sweat copper along with some stainless swedge lock. So I do a little bit of tube bending. That's why I have these 3 8 and half inch tubing benders. This is Milwaukee's two foot digital level. I use it a lot when I'm tacking in the bench. It's also great as an angle finder or if you need to match a custom angle, it'll give you a, a degree or a percentage, 16th per foot of slope. Whatever unit you want, whatever your tolerance is, uh, you can set it for that. Corey also uses this for weld out in the bench. Rather than leveling out the bench every time he turns the piece to weld it, he can just slap it on the pipe. 
If it says four degrees, then you can slap it on the face of the flange and make that say four degrees as well. And like I said, most of the stuff that I showed you is in my Amazon storefront linked in the description below. Check that out if you get a chance. If you want more sanitary welding content, let me know in the comments exactly what you want to see. If not, be sure to not hit the subscribe button. That's the best way to let me know you don't want any more info on this topic. Until next time, I'm Drew and I'm Building America.